Welcome to another Melbourne Cocoa Heads presentation. Recorded live, April 14th, 2011. In this session, Jesse Collis and Stuart Gladow present a quick lightning talk on becoming more productive in Xcode 4 using its many keyboard shortcuts. It takes a lot of time to do a half an hour presentation, so we spent half an hour doing a five minute presentation. Um, most of the time was getting that Xcode thing in there. Um, so yes, Stu and I are EA at the moment, and we switched to Xcode 4 about a week ago. Um, I've used it before when it went GM, then it went GM2, now we're kind of in it full time. Um, so yeah, we thought we'd start with some shortcuts. The first thing we thought of is, is how to get more efficient, and we looked at a couple of cheat sheets which are linked at the end, but anyway, we thought we'd go through it really quickly. Um, there are your shortcuts. Um, combinations of those get you, get you everywhere. Um, I can't ever remember, I've got, actually got that slide up here, I can't ever remember what any of them are. <laughs> it's, it's, it's control, this is for left or right, control, option, shift, command. That's how you roll. Um, you can't buy third party keyboards that actually have it etched on the keys what they actually are. Awesome. There you go. That would, <laughs> that would be worth its weight in, in plastic. Um, so control option shift command and um, Stu, can, Stu can start the first real slide. Sure. Can you change it from there? No, no, but that's just so I remember which, which icon is which when I say it. <laughs> So you're using the keynote app? No, no, it's, it's the number keys, the left and yeah, right. Yeah, sure. Yeah, so one of the things, it's trying to get it efficient in your IDE, because they've changed a bunch of the shortcuts, so um, we printed out a bunch of those um, pages of shortcuts from the, the, I think Pragmatic Studios did one, and um, Person Samurai did another one that's a bit more detailed. And sort of as we used them, I, I've sort of been highlighting them as I used them, trying to work out which ones I use a lot and which ones I don't. And, um, and sort of adding ones that I found useful, just... Um, Sort of finding my way, you know, how can you do this automatically? Um, so we're just going to bounce through a few of the ones that maybe aren't the ones that everyone uses automatically, but the ones that I found sort of weren't on these lists and I, and I wanted to use. Um, so, so that's uh, shift command two. Yeah, shift command. Testing my memory. <laughs> <laughs> this is a test our memory to see if I can remember what they were. I think that actually brings up the Xcode organizer. Bingo. <laughs> um, so, so that's different from what it used to be. I think in Expo 3 it was you know, Command Control O or something like that. Um, anyway, that's kind of useful because you know you, you don't use it very often, but when you do, it's the kind of window you just want to bring up, do something, and, and then then blow away again. So it's kind of useful just to have that sort of muscle memory in there. So you know, just you know, Shift Command 2, bring it up, do something, knock it away again. Oh, that's Shift Command O. <laughs> that's quick. That's quick. Open now. Um, open quickly. Um, previously, it was like Command Shift D or something obscure, um, and they've they actually updated the functionality of Open Quickly as well. So you can don't have to type the file name in properly, or you can start typing in class names and things. That's what. That's one of the first ones I memorized. Um, really, really handy to get to a class or to get to anything that's in the project. Uh, even even sub projects that you've added to the workspace works well. Uh, so, my favorite command comma, your favorite? <laughs> yeah, it's a build error too. <laughs> <laughs> um, build error. So, so if if you build and you get a bunch of errors or warnings and you just want to you know stop in some other class, you just want to go straight to that build error and, and work out what it is. You can just press uh, command comma and it'll take you there. And if you keep your warnings. Sorry, is that Oh, it's a apostrophe. Sorry. Yeah, come on with you a little bit. <laughs> um, so that will take you to the, um, the the first build area that you have. Um, hopefully, you don't have many of them. And um, if, if you hit shift at the same time, um, there's basically you know command quote marks, and that will take you back. So if you've just got a couple of sort of build things you're trying to work out where the actual error, you know, because Xcode gives you really obscure build errors. It's often hard to find out what's gone wrong. <laughs> As you know, so, so going forward and backwards between them, you're like, oh yeah, I actually just forgot a bracket there. Oh, I forgot an import. And, um, and Switch to LLVM and then we'll go away. Switch to LLVM? <laughs> well, we yeah, actually, LLVM. I think we are using LLVM. LLVM. So, so maybe I'm just bad at the same build errors. Uh, oh, command, <laughs> yeah, shift, no, no, shift command J. That's um, opening the current file in your editor in the, in the, in the root, the list at the bottom. List on the left. 
Re reveal, yeah, it's going to say it next. Yeah, yeah revealing group tree. That that'll bring it up. That's really handy if you've if you've done like quick open or you've you've got to that file somewhere else and that'll bring it out to the left. We find it handy when you're when you're in bundles and things like that and it's sort of you got to navigate through a tree. But that's that's really handy when you're in a file. So control command Y. Um, this actually took me a while to find. I was looking through all the Xcode shortcuts. That's the, the debugger continue. And the reason is because it's listed in that in the Xcode shortcuts as pause. <laughs> Which I don't know if you I don't know if you've ever used like the pause thing of the debugger. I usually set a breakpoint and the debugger hits the breakpoint and, and then I pauses. continue. Uh, I never actually just run my app and just hit random pause. <laughs> <laughs> just to see what the app was doing at the time. Maybe out of curiosity, just to see what it was doing. Um, so it's actually listed in there as pause, but the way I use it is actually continue when you once you get a break. Oh, I gave it away. That one's um, command command six, option six. Um, this one. Stu told me about this one. Um, this brings up, the, the next slide is going to give exactly what it is. It brings up the jump bar, which is new in Xcode 4, which is kind of that sort of segmented. Yeah, yeah. you can head to the next one, actually. Um, it brings up, the, brings up the class outline in, in the jump bar. So if you go 1 to 6, um, it'll bring up different sections. Um, 6 is, is here, 5, 4, 3, and then I think 1 brings up the sort of smart menu here. Um, it's really handy because it's slightly different in Xcode 3, but at least getting to the 6 at the end there is, is really awesome. And you can actually get, bring up that menu of the, the class outline and start typing method definitions in, and it will jump to where you've started to type, so it's like a quick, quick open. Yeah, I think that's especially useful if you fall into the, the anti-pattern of having really big UI view controllers. You often just want to jump into a view controller, and you, you know you want to go to the load view method, but there's a whole lot of other sort of stuff in there that probably should be abstracted out somewhere else. Um, so it's just really handy just to be able to hit control 6 and start typing, you know, load view, enter, you, you're at the method that you want. And if you're used to Eclipse and other control, yeah. where you can get so control 6. Um, if you're used to other IDEs where it's really easy to get a class outline, like in another little um, window, it, it's kind of nice to be able to just, just bring that up and see the, the class outline with all their, their methods. And does that work in all the different editors? Like you can jump from one editor to another and then use the jump path editor, or is that only the main one in there? Um, I, I only use one editor, so I can't actually comment. I would assume it's for whatever active editor you're in, yeah. but I can't, I don't know. Top. I don't know what that means. Instruments. Oh, yeah, that, that oh, was my one. That's, that's an iron or one. <laughs> yeah, this is, uh, one reason I put this in here is because it's actually in one of the lists, but it's, it's uh, control I, um, and it'll re-indent your selection. So if you use really verbose um, method declarations or selectors, and you tend to put them on different lines, which is handy. Quite often, as you copy paste or move around, they get screwed up. Anyway, select your whole document, hit uh, Control I, and it'll re-indent them all, and that's really handy. Including lining up all the little, little columns. Yeah, the nice. columns and bits and pieces. <laughs> <laughs> this one took me a little while to find, but it's actually quite handy. So I think some of the people that jumped into the, um, the app code in IntelliJ, um, Objective-C IDE, with the latest beta releases, and I found that, oh yeah, I can actually bump lines up and down. You know, I don't have to select a line, cut it, move it somewhere else. I can actually bump lines up and down. So I had a look through the Xcode shortcuts, and you can actually do that in Xcode. I don't know if people use it. So I'm hoping I got it right. So, so option command and, and the square brackets, you don't have to have anything selected. But if you're just on the current line, you just want to bump it up, um, up and down, then you can just use that. Um, with that command. So that's one of those ones that's really unnatural to learn and you look at it and you're like, I'm never going to remember that. But I, I think can't so remember. as you start to um, learn it and every time you go to actually copy and paste a line or drag something or do something with the mouse, just think, well, maybe I can just bump it up and down. And, and I think as you learn it, you're a lot quicker. Is it just the option key on top of going left and right? <coughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, basically. Can you also do multiple selections and then multiple? It doesn't depend on a selection, so I'm not sure if it would do a selection. But have you selected multiple lines and pumped them up? Um, have Xcode running? Uh, I've probably tried. I, I haven't tried. I suspect it probably would. Live demo. Live demo. No, no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is one I. This one I found um, fiddling around. This is uh, this is option option shift click. I think I've got. Yeah, it's it's. Oh, oh. Option shift click is super open. Um, if you try it. 
this is my live demo one I did sort of prepare if you try option shift click on a file on you on the left there it brings up this it brings up this crazy this crazy little UI here yeah, I know. So you can you can open you can open your thing in the current editor, which is what it's selected. You can open it in the bottom editor, which is like the companion editor. You can open it in a new window, which is on the left. <laughs> or the, the, you can open it in a new tab, like straight from there. That's option shift click on anything on the left there. A new tab and a new tab, and there you go. You got a new tab. Click here. You go. New window. Oh, I haven't. I found it this afternoon. <laughs> Um, no, there was another key combination that that opens it in the bottom, like it's like Control Shift or something, or I don't know, Command Shift, and it opens it in the companion editor. But I found that I'm like, whoa! But just to have that little UI pop up, it's like, <laughs> and your question is valid. Who would use that? <laughs> uh, that's 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 super super open. It's my name as well, not theirs. <laughs> Oh wait, this this is our this is this is the piece this, this de resistance. Is we tried to find the most complicated shortcut. The Apple's really into just mashing the bottom left part of the <laughs> and then pressing something and you know something will happen. So um, this is actually I think it's a new one compared to Xcode 3. Um, you know when you did a clean in Xcode 3 and then you rebuilt everything and you found out it didn't actually clean it out and you still had didn't copy some bundles or you know especially when you change configurations and things like that didn't do it. This thing is like proper clean. <laughs> It should be super clean after yeah, yeah, it's super clean <laughs> mate. So it's basically doing, you know, an RM dash RF of your build directory. It, it blows everything away. So including the dependencies as well? Like your project dependencies might have built. Yeah. In Xcode 4, if you've chosen to select the sort of hidden build directory that hides itself in user yeah. library support, right. that will kill everything it's built. Yeah, so, you know, you're not going to use it very often, but just mash the bottom left <laughs> and press hey, and it's basically a clean slate. Um, and if you want to get um, really on top of some of these things, um, we're sort of tossing up the idea of having a, a no mouse day. Well, you, you are. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to say, look, well, as you sort of find things you need to do, you know, try and go a whole day where you don't use the mouse. If you find you want to use the mouse for something, find the shortcut. You can use the mouse to try and find the shortcut <laughs> and, and go through and then use the shortcut maybe take a note of it. Um, Jesse actually had the idea of really trying to test out Apple's sort of interface stuff and trying to have a no keyboard day. <laughs> that sounds easier. That lasted 10 minutes with, with uh, a guy at work, but yeah. Pick, pick the guys that are being paid by someone else. <laughs> <laughs> I've got one more for you. Um, uh, hold on, hold on, we, hold on, hold on. <laughs> That's the well. We had, there's no slide, but we're going to do. More. We're going to do. Yep. And there's a couple of links um, where we got a couple of printouts where we kind of refer to at work. But yeah, we'd like to go around the room just quickly, really quickly, and just see if anyone's got one that we we've missed. That's kind of cool. That's not Command C or. <laughs> You've got one. And uh, Steve's uh, got control, one. Control Option Command uh, whatever the question mark uh, help of your current. Current uh, line of the selected class, so uh, and grid organizer and the help of that gets searched. Okay. So that's been real, uh, that's real, my second real, favorite. Real help, not the stupid little pop up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. You never want Straight to the real pop up. It's like if you if you ever use if you ever programmed in the Windows world, it's like F is that F one? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yeah. You mean you mean you mean less brightness? <laughs> Less brightness. <laughs> yeah. no. um, so is that the same one that was in Xcode 3 that you right clicked? Yeah, you right clicked and went view and documentation. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Which is so missing again. in that. In that <laughs> one. Nuts. Say, say it again, the shortcut again. Uh, control, option, command, uh, question mark. Excellent. And you'll email us. Yeah, post it. Yeah, yeah. Any other. To bring up the mini oh, you're using the mouse. <laughs> so maybe tap the sign. <laughs> the one, one I really liked it because I, I found myself I was always, always using the assistant editor. Mm -hmm. Working there when you're supposed to be working in the main editor. One of the things I hate about Xcode for it, sort of giving these different statuses to the different editors. Yeah. But if you find yourself working in the assistant editor, Apple option comma will take you open that file in the main editor so it becomes your primary file. Oh, okay. From the, from the assistant from the assistant editor, it'll yeah, move it. Right. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Almost all the end up. Yeah. 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 Ye
Yeah. yeah. Any other ones? Command slash, and we'll just comment icon. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think the biggest shortcut is not having to deploy instance variables. That's the export form. It's a compile of shortcuts. Has anybody found an organized import? I was going to actually put up the shortcut for organized import. You don't have to find them on a torment, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> the compiler oh, should be out of your organizing for you. You need more than 10 fingers? <laughs> yeah, you need 11. What the 11 point is? What is it? <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> shift, shift command um, square bracket left and right for so moving tabs. Yep. Switching between tabs. That's the same as Safari, is it? Yep. Is that right? Oh, that, uh, yeah, yeah. Xcode tabs? Yeah, Xcode tabs. Oh, wicked. Command T opens a new tab. Command T opens a new tab. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. That's really simple. That's really obvious. <laughs> <laughs> Xcode still doesn't quite get tabbed. It still tries to open stuff within I the think, tabs. Yeah, so for that, some of that sort of behavior, like yeah, um, exactly. tabs and what have you, and navigation and tabs and things, it's taken all the shortcuts from Safari. Yeah. Actually, oh, if you think like that, there's probably a lot more we could have thought of. Yeah. Look at the Safari <laughs> shortcuts and try and use an expert. Sorry, yeah. you have one. Oh, I don't know if this is an expert code for, but I think it would be. Um, and it might be obvious as well. The command option is left and right as well to go back in your cursor history. back in the files. And forward in your cursor history as well. Yeah. I don't know. I think oh. it changed in expert four oh, to be it? command control. Yeah, yeah. yeah that changed in expert four. Yeah, I keep on hitting random. It changed it to just going between the files, not through your whole cursor history. It made it better. It's better in Xcode oh. 4 because it, it won't just go. Yeah. You. Oh, yeah, the standard command control up and down to go between the header file and that implementation. I think we might we could, we could probably go for hours on this. <laughs> 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 Thanks, guys. Yeah. Yeah. We wish to thank Jesse Collis and Stuart Gladell for presenting this month. Thanks also to PlayUp for hosting this month's event. If you would like to know more about PlayUp, visit them on the web at iplayup.com. If you would like to know more about Melbourne Cocoa Heads, visit us on the web at melbournecocoaheads.com or follow Melbourne Cocoa on Twitter.